365 Radio. Sam, this was expected, but now it's official. When you looked at the details of the $18 million, did the three teams leaving get a pretty good break? Yeah, I think so. And only $8 million more than you would have had to pay it if you didn't leave early. And not only that, I think the fact that they get 12 years to do it is really advantageous for them. I mean, obviously, these are schools that are leaving in order to increase their athletic revenue. Uh, you know, the, the media rights payout, you would suspect, would be pretty large, uh, certainly substantially larger than what they're accustomed to. Uh, but but spreading it out over the course of 12 years, uh, at least that extra $8 million, uh, is going to be a really, really big help for them. And, and I think it's about as good as a deal as you could uh, expect them definitely better than I would have expected that they would have gotten long term. Right, especially since they could fire a coach and pay all that buyout money, you know, a million two a year doesn't seem uh, all that bad within today's athletic department standards. Sam, do you have any idea on how the Big 12 will now move on scheduling with potentially just one year of 14 teams? Yeah, we're still, that's still up in the air. That's still something to be talked about. You know, Max Olson has been working on that as well, just trying to get a feel for it. And, and I think that's something that we, we may get a little closer on once there's a commissioner in place uh and, and obviously we have to see uh, you know again it continues to be a waiting game with texas and oklahoma to see you know what they're what they're going to do but i think that obviously every every expectation that i have and i think that probably you guys feel the same at this point from folks you talk to is that 23 it will be 14 and so uh that, that's that's to me and i asked chris president yeah he's not a fight director about that because not only is it a conference issue but it's also a non-conference issue because you know you've got these four AAC schools coming in that have four non-conference games. And, and now they're going to, you know, are they going to have still four non-conference games? Are they going to have three? You know, how's that going to work? So, and, and there's so much uncertainty in, in that regard. So I think it's still a lot to be determined at this point, but, uh, but it's going to be fascinating to see. And if Houston, I'll say this from Houston standpoint, if they even have one year in the league with Texas and Oklahoma, I think they consider it a win. They've been wanting to play Texas badly for a long long time we got to get the longhorns in houston before they leave sam that, 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 that's what i say i mean how, oh, i think they're gonna try i <laughs> think they're gonna try how crazy do you think that crowd would be for a, a texas houston game in, in the h oh it, it would be huge I, I would guess too and i know houston would probably want it on campus but but because of the potential gate it's probably you would probably have it at nrg just because you, you possibly could put you know fill that stadium up with Sixty or seventy thousand for it, uh, but yeah, it would be a pretty intense crowd. They have not played since two thousand two, mm. and obviously they were long time uh, Southwest Conference mates for you know a couple of decades, and so uh, that that is a game that that Houston fans have wanted really really badly for a long long time. So yeah, if, if that happens and it comes to fruition in Houston. I can only imagine what the atmosphere will be like. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have Clifford Douglas, who's an associate commissioner for Conference USA, on here in the next segment. And you know that the American Conference also, by doing this, as you mentioned, it, it kickstarts what they're trying to do because they're getting teams from Conference USA and elsewhere. Um, do you think we'll ever see a conference just disappear after a couple more realignments? I wonder about it. I know people were making that comment today when, when the, the terms of the buyout came out that, that it was going to be spread out over that long. People asking, is the American going to be around it? you know, 14 years, you know, the, the time it's going to take to pay out the whole buyout. I, I'm reluctant to say that a conference will implode. We, we certainly came close with Conference USA uh, after this last uh, round of realignment. But the fact that Conference USA has been around since 1996 and has still survived through multiple rounds of realignment, I think as long as there's an appetite for schools to move up, then I think that will there'll still be, there, there will still be, the conference that we see right now will still be in existence. That, that's not to say it won't happen because we saw the WAC, uh, you know, was out of football for a little while after after that realignment round in 2010. Uh, so, so it's certainly not impossible. And if there were a conference that were in danger of that, I think Conference USA would be the one. But I think there's enough appetite for schools wanting to move up from the SDS to the SDS level. And it seems like Conference USA is the haven for that. So, so if you look at CUSA as the most vulnerable conference, as long as there's that appetite from those schools on the FCS level to move up, I think Conference USA is going to be happy to be that that uh, venue for them. So, so I, I I don't think in the in the near future I don't see that happening. Any conference imploding or season to exist in the near future. 
Sam, in terms of uh, you know the realignment of the schedules and divisions or no divisions and all that, I mean, I know there's there's two chapters. There's the OU Texas chapter, and then whatever the future is after OU and Texas leave. From Houston's point of view, do you think they have any type of of you know certain opponent they would want to play year in year out? Would they want a, a Texas schools pod? How do you think that they view that at this point? Yeah, I think if, if you end up going to divisions, obviously they would want to be paired with Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech for sure. Uh, probably Oklahoma State makes some sense uh, to be in there because it's not super far. And, and they're, they're, those are teams that have played each other in non-conference in the past, both in football and in other sports. So to me, that, that makes sense if you want to go divisions. I, I, I'm torn on the whole idea of whether or not you should do divisions. I, I think obviously with the current Big 12 setup, with a round robin, it's perfect. Obviously, that's not possible when you go to 12 teams or even 14 for the short time that they will. But I, I, the, to me, I don't know that there are enough rivalries that need protecting in in this in this conference in the new Big 12 that you have to go to a setup that the SEC is probably going to go to, which is the three three protected rivals and six uh, other conference games. I, I think you're, I think you're you're able to do divisions if you want because I don't think. I think there's a way to split it up geographically enough that makes sense. And there's no, like I said, there's not enough rivalries, I don't think, that, that need protecting to the point that you can do that. I think you can get away with divisions if you want to do it. Well, oh, Sam, to your point, I mean, just look at Texas Tech. I mean, this is a team that uh, the two schools, they probably played uh, their fans. Now, how the other fans felt about them, you know, on their rivalry chart is, is to be debated. But, uh, you know, Texas Tech got up to play Texas, and they got up to play Texas A&M. And those – those are gone now. So, you know, now maybe it's Baylor and TCU or maybe it's Houston. Like, Texas Tech pretty much has to start their who we hate the most rivalry up anew. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, it sounds, and I think I remember last summer, I think it was a statesman reported that Texas and Texas Tech will probably continue playing in, in non-conference. Under, at least there has been that discussion. But, uh, but yeah, they, they, obviously they've been in the league with Baylor and TCU, so those are normal games. I think Houston and Tech, when they have played in football and they have played several times in – in non-conference since uh, they've been in separate leagues, uh, they've been really fun games. You know, they, uh, I remember 09 was a really, really fun, intense game. Uh, there was a few years ago, I think, when Alan Bowman was a quarterback this last year, that it was a high scoring, I want to say like a 63-49 to 49 type game. Uh, the, Texas Tech and Houston, I think, has a real potential to be a really entertaining football rivalry, especially if Joey McGuire ends up there for the long term. You know, we know Dana Holgerson's probably not going anywhere. He's going to be pretty happy and just sign a new contract if, if him and Joey are going head-to-head for a few years, I think that 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 could ten- potentially be a really, really fun one. By the way, some Houston fans in our chat room have said that they would fly in from all over the country and pay $1,000 a ticket to be able to watch Houston play Texas. At home. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are, they are, I don't doubt that a bit. <laughs> hey, Sam, one thing I do want to, to mention, and we've had some of this on the chat room and other things have been said in the message boards as well, the $18 million is just paltry, pennies. So no matter when Texas and Oklahoma leave, they're going to have to pay the piper, correct? Right. Yeah, that, that's that's been the stance on the big from the Big Twelve side because they have the leverage at this point. Uh, they, they, there really is no incentive for them to let them go early for a reduced fee. Uh, if, if they're gonna if they're gonna play nice and they're gonna you know be be good conference league mates for the rest of their time, then there's no incentive for them to leave. Or to let them out early uh, because it, it only triggers the you know, ability for, for the TV networks to renegotiate that deal early. So uh, keep keeping them is good for the value of the conference uh, as long as they can. And then obviously, I think those, those incoming teams that have the chance to do that in a 14 team league, I think is very attractive to, to the Big 12 as a whole and certainly to the new program. Don't you also think that what Chris Pesman, I believe, said that year three they get a full share, that that's probably the expectation? that that's when they would go to the regular, the, what will be the new 12? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like. I mean, I mean, I, we wouldn't, I guess you wouldn't rule out 24 at this point. Right. Uh, you know, there's right. still some time there if they want to make the move in 24. But, but yeah, I, I, think, I think it certainly seems to set up nicely for 25. If that's how it, if it ends up, if Texas and OU play this thing all the way up to 25, and then, you know, like you said, the, the new members become, uh, full share members in year three. It all it all becomes a very nice, clean, organized break, which is a far departure from what we experienced last July when this all broke and everything was very much chaotic. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, Sam, as always, for what you do and also the coverage you give us. Sam Kahn, theathletic.com, who's also covered Houston for a long, long time. So we went back to back to back with Mark.